Is Eli Lilly, ticker symbol LLY, a good stock to buy now? Welcome to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental analysis of Lilly using Warren Buffett's investing framework. We'll look at six key financial metrics before we figure out three different fair values to understand what Eli Lilly is worth in today's stock market. Plus, I'll share a special bonus that could be the deciding safety factor when adding Eli Lilly stock to your portfolio. Right now, Eli Lilly stock trades for $905.59 per share. In its last day of trading alone, it's down 3.82%. However, since July of 2023, Eli Lilly has crushed the S&P 500. In the last five years, Eli Lilly's compounding at an insane 53.8% annually. When we look at their stock chart in the last 20 years, much of their outperformance has come in recent years. Over this time, they're compounding at 15.5% annually overall. Even better for shareholders, right now Eli Lilly pays a modest 0.52% dividend yield. Added together, they've compounded at 16% annually. Today, Lilly trades $61 off of their 52-week and all-time highs and more than double their 52-week low. With their stock gains, they're the biggest pharmaceutical company in the world and they have an $848 billion market cap. Even with huge market beating outperformance, only five super investors own Lilly stock today. This is led by Chase Coleman of Tiger Global Management, who has 3.8% of his portfolio invested in the company. Starting with our first metric, we want their average returns on capital to be greater than 14%. The average business earns 7%, so we can build in some margin of safety based on the quality of Eli Lilly. In their case, they earn high returns on capital in all five of these years. They come in around 29 to 32% depending on the year. Overall, when they're averaged out, Eli Lilly brings in 30% returns on capital. These have been very stable and are four times better than a normal business. It's double our benchmark and it's a strong check on our first metric. Now, what does Eli Lilly really do that they can earn these high returns? Eli Lilly is a drug firm with the focus on neuroscience, cardiometabolic, cancer, and immunology. Lilly's key products include Verzenio for Cancer, Mongerno, Zampardo, and Jardins, Trulicity, Humalog, and Humalin for Diabetes, and Taltz and Illumiant for Immunology. The company soared in the last few years on strong pharmaceutical data from Mongerno and Jardins, especially as these drugs are being used for weight loss. Next, we want growth in their sales, earnings, and free cash flows. Growth of a business with high returns means more of a good thing. For Eli Lilly, they've grown their sales by 61% from 2019 until today. However, at the same time, it would look like the company's earnings are down. This was due to a $3.7 billion charge from discontinued operations. That's something to dig into, but we're actually going to exclude this, and because of that, their earnings are up. But at the same time, their free cash flows have gone from being positive in the last five years to negative in their last 12 months and really cratering in 2023. That's also related to a special change in their other net operating assets that's affected them in their last 12 months. Because of this, their free cash flows are negative today, and it's an X on our second metric. Now, in metric number three, we want to see growth in their earnings per share. This looks at Eli Lilly from the view of an individual shareholder. Lilly earned $4.96 per share in 2019, and this has continued to grow. All the way up until their last 12 months, Eli Lilly's brought in $6.79. This is on the back of increased earnings, again excluding their discontinued operations, and 3.5% share buybacks. Because of this, it's another check on metric number 3. Metric 4 is similar but even more important. Here we want free cash flow per share growth. Eli Lilly's cash flows per share tell a different story for the business. They're negative today due to those changes in their net operating assets and their working capital. On top of this, the company is also spending more on CapEx. Because of that, the company's consuming cash both in 2023 and in 2024. It's an X on metric number four. Before we look at Lilly's balance sheet, it's time for our first dividend bonus. Right now, Lilly pays a small 0.52% dividend yield. But the question to ask is, is it safe? That's why we'll look at their dividends. In four of the last five years, Lilly comfortably supported their dividends using their cash flows. They grew their cash flows and they grew their dividends both at the same time. 2023 was different. The company continued to grow their dividends, in this case by a lot, yet their cash flows went negative. The company started consuming cash and they're still paying it out to shareholders. This means they needed another source for that cash. Lilly's grown their dividends for nine years straight, and they grew these by 15% year over year. That's strong growth, but with different uses for cash in their business, their dividends aren't supported today. This means it's an X and it's a potential concern to look at for shareholders. Great companies can grow and earn high returns without using a lot of debt. Eli Lilly until recently was no different. 
The company had modest levels of net debt from 2019 until 2022. These were also easily covered by an average of their cash flows. They announced two major acquisitions for Sansa's for $1.93 billion in July of 2023 and Point Biopharma for $1.4 billion in October of 2023. Both of these added to the company's debt load at the same time they were spending more on CapEx and consuming this cash in their business. Lilly also just announced a $3.2 billion acquisition that they're going to use even more debt to fund. Today, Eli Lilly has $23 billion of net debt, and in the last five years when we add up their cash flows, they've only brought in $21.5 billion worth. This is pretty close to their debt position, but it doesn't quite cover it. Because of that, it's an X on metric number five. Maybe not the biggest concern in the world, but again, not ideal. Now before we find out how much Eli Lilly is worth, it's time for our safety bonus metric. The father of value investing and Warren Buffett's teacher, Ben Graham, wanted to see a current ratio greater than one and a half times if you're picking individual stocks. To Graham, it's a key measure of short-term liquidity for how a company can pay its bills in a hurry. Unfortunately for Lilly, this hasn't been the case in any of the last five years. Now, because the company is very asset light as a pharmaceutical business, this may not be the most concerning thing in the world. Their current ratio did drop below 1 in 2023, but it's back at 1.35 times today. Lilly's balance sheet, both short-term and long-term, look pretty similar in that they're not ideal, but they're not in serious trouble either. This is less than we wanted. It's an X on our safety metric. Again, something to research. Now, how much is Eli Lilly worth? The big metric of them all, metric number six, is also our first valuation. We want Lilly's average cash flows divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield greater than 5%. This is in line with the historical yield from the S&P 500, and it's greater than the 10-year treasury. In an average year over this time, Lilly brings in $4.3 billion of free cash flow. Today, they have an $871 billion enterprise value, which is what we get when we add their net debt and their market cap together. When we divide their cash flows by their enterprise value, it only gives us a 0.5% average yield. That's 10 times smaller than what we wanted. It's an X on metric number six, but don't throw out the business. We still have two more valuations before we combine these at the end of the video for Eli Lilly's final fair value. Next, we'll look at Lilly's growth with a DCF model. Here, we'll take an average of their cash flows and use historical assumptions to grow them into the future. Let's assume that they grow their average cash flows at 5% annually in the next decade. Even with the recent hype around the business, this actually matches how they've grown over the last 20 years. Then in the following 10 years, we'll assume they only grow at 4% annually. We'll also add in their tangible book value to credit their net worth. Then we'll look for a market beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett wants from his investments. If that's the case, then based on their cash flows and historical growth, a DCF valuation says the numbers just don't make sense for Eli Lilly. Today, their fair value would only be $49 per share. That's insanely low from what their stock price is. Even as an asset light pharmaceutical company, they haven't been the most predictable in their past, so this isn't the most accurate for the company. Still, by even the most rough of metrics, the math just doesn't work for Eli Lilly stock going forward. Currently, they're trading for nearly 23 times sales, and they're the largest pharmaceutical company in the world. Historically, in the past decade, they've only traded for five times sales and as low as two times sales. In valuations alone, that's up more than 10 times. This is why compared to their past valuations with future assumptions for the business, our third fair value only comes in at $447 per share. That's close to their 52-week lows and it's less than half of their current stock price. Lilly's been a long-term compounder in its history, but their stock price has gone nearly vertical in the last few years. This isn't the first time they've had a huge run-up though. Back in the 90s, they hit a peak in their stock price and then proceeded to trade flat for nearly 20 years. That could very well be the case today. Now, Warren Buffett likes the numbers, but it's the qualities of a business that are his true love. Why don't we learn what these are for Lilly through a long and a short thesis? Why don't we start with a long thesis first? Number one, Lilly's strong leadership and weight loss drugs should drive industry-leading growth. Approved and next-generation weight loss drugs are well-positioned in their pipeline. Number two, Lilly's cancer drug, Verzenio, reported strong data in early-stage breast cancer. This opens up strong potential in a multi-billion dollar market. Number three, Lilly's developing a new Alzheimer's drug that could become a major blockbuster. This is especially because the FDA appears to have a lower threshold for approval for this disease. Even with research breakthroughs, it's not all positives for Lilly. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, the risk to succeed for Alzheimer's drugs remain high in clinical development and insurance coverage. 
Number two, several of Lilly's next generation diabetes drugs could lead to cannibalization of currently approved Lilly drugs. Number three, increasing competition to weight loss drugs and pound could significantly increase over the next few years. Now let's put everything together for Eli Lilly. In our fundamental review, we learned the company only goes two for six on the select six analysis. Lilly earns very high returns and they've grown their sales, but they've gotten to the point where they've added on more debt than their cash flow support. It's also the case that with higher capex and discontinued operations, their cash flows are now negative. This could mean the company is reinvesting in the future, but they're a pharmaceutical business that's historically been pretty asset light. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Still, as we've looked at projections for Lilly, the math just isn't making sense. The company is probably too highly valued at today's stock prices for things to really work out and for it to have the same returns that it's had in the last handful of years. This is why when we look at our investing tools which show Eli Lilly's stock price, today it only comes in at $254 per share. That's less than half of their 52-week low and a quarter of what they're currently being valued at. Eli Lilly looks overvalued. To find stocks that are undervalued, sign up for our investing tools and get exclusive bonus coverage of 101 Dalmatians, I mean stocks, and counting.